Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, module on images uh, and we'll, uh, where we talk about uh, image import export and things like bring your own image. My name is Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. So in this module, well, first let's talk about Oracle provided images. Now, Oracle provided images are templates of virtual hard drives that determine the operating system and other software for an instance. Now, uh, images can be Oracle provided, as we said, uh, can be custom um, images, or you can bring your own uh, images. Now, uh, we provide um, several pre-built images for Oracle, Linux, Microsoft Windows, Ubuntu, CentOS, and again, the best place to look up this information is on, on our documentation page, as this information keeps uh, changing all the time. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. We have been seeing this in the demo. If you, if you spin up a Linux image, the username OPC is, is the one you use. Uh, we uh, allow port access on port 22, uh, default set of firewall rules, so you don't have to open that explicitly, though you could start with uh, a firewall rule which blocks everything and you'll have to open it uh, manually. Uh, you can provide a startup script using cloud in it. Uh, we'll look into this in subsequent uh, uh, demos. Uh, and yeah, and some some other things related to Oracle uh, Linux. On Windows, uh, the username OPC is uh, automatically created with a one-time password, which you will have to change um, when you try to log in for the first time. Uh, and uh, you can use things like Windows Update Utility to get the latest updates uh, from Microsoft. Now there is this concept of custom image. What is a custom image? You can create a custom image of an instance boot disk and use it to launch other instances. Instances you launch from the custom image includes the customizations, configuration, and software installed when you created the image. So what this means is uh, customers have these golden images where they harden the image, they install certain kind of patches, they have you know, uh, company mandates to use the same image uh, across their divisions or geographies or um, or different um, uh, regions, etc. Uh, so you could support that uh, those uh, the concept of gold images using a feature in OCI uh, called custom image. Now during this process, when you are creating a custom image, the instance shuts down and remains unavailable for several uh, minutes. The instance restarts when the process completes. Um, keep in mind. This is only boot disk where your operating system is, right? We talked about this, we talked about this in the next module. So if you have block volumes, those block volumes would not be, uh, the data would not be uh, included from, from those blocks, right? So the way you think about this is you have a compute instance and then compute instance can have boot volumes and can have one or many block volumes. Uh, block volumes are where you would keep your application and your data. Boot volume is where your operating system is, right? So custom images only care about your uh, boot disk, not about your uh, block volumes. Uh, custom image has some some limitations. It cannot exceed 300K. And there's some limitations around uh, Windows custom images. Now, what is this capability of import ex export? Now, we said custom image, one of the key reasons you would use it is to use uh, the same image, let's say the same hardened image, also some people call it as gold image, across accounts, uh, across regions, across geographies, etc., right, across divisions. So if you have to do that, there has to be an easy way to share these uh, images, right? Share these images across tendencies and across cloud regions. So you could do that using this, uh, using this capability called uh, import export. And uh, as you can guess, the import export capability uses OCI object storage service. So you could use that as sort of a uh, temporary place where you would store these images for either importing or exporting. Both Linux and Windows operating systems are supported. Uh, and then uh, there, there are certain things uh, which are related around the mode of, of import export. So the three modes which are supported today, one is emulation mode, second one is called para virtualized, and the third one is called native mode. What do these mean? Emulation mode, as the name specifies, means that virtual machine IO devices, so whether it's disk or network, CPU and memory are implemented in software. So that's the term emulation. Uh, emulated VM can support almost any x86 operating system, whether it's a 32-bit or 64-bit. Uh, but the downside is these VMs are slow because you're emulating all of them, the hardware in, in software. The second um, 
uh, mode we support is para virtualized now para virtualized by its very name means that the virtual machine includes a driver specifically de designed to enable virtualization um, so many of the instances support uh, para virtualization uh, but remember that it's a specific driver uh, where which is used to enable uh, virtualization in the native mode uh, you get the best performance without getting into all the details uh, and some vendors also call this as hardware virtualized machine hvm so you would have terms you would you have terms like um, single root io virtualization sr io iov uh, so for those kind of scenarios where you have the maximum pass through and you get the best performance uh, you could use the native mode uh, this is the mode uh, you can choose when you're spinning up the instance i'll show you this in the in the demo uh, and um, the industry general term is hvm um, hardware virtu virtualized machine we call it native mode so these are the three different modes you could use when you spin up your instances uh, and you create um, your custom images and again you can find more details here there uh, there's a white paper and there are more details around that now there's also this capability of bring your own image now what this lets you do is bring your own versions of operating systems to the cloud uh, as long as the underlying hardware supports it now why would you do that well if you have lift and shift uh, scenarios if you want to use old operating systems we just talked about that uh, you could use uh, or you want to do experimentation you flexibility etc you can bring your own image now the way this process works is you have your on-prem environment you bring the image in a queue cow to format uh, like we said you know the import export uses object storage so you store the image here and from there we can create a custom image uh, or you could create uh, you know you could uh, you could do the vice versa right you could from an instance you create a custom image which you could store in object storage now when you do that of course you have to comply with all the licensing requirements and this is a topic we again discuss in greater details in the level 200 uh, module on compute so, so with that let me just quickly jump to the console and show you a quick uh, demo on custom images so if i go back to my uh, compute uh, console you can see a bunch of instances we have been running and we have been terminating it's a good idea to uh, terminate images which are not uh, terminate instances which are not using so right now it says uh, there are no uh, images uh, that match uh, there, there there are no images which are custom images which are available so if i go back to my instance um, link page and scroll down i created this web uh, instance uh, when we were doing the the virtual cloud network you can see some some matrix etc so first thing i can do here is i can come here and create a custom image now uh, creating a custom image as we said uh, would involve a bit of a downtime so i say web is fine and this would take around 15 to 20 minutes and and this image would be created now once the image is created i can use that to spin up other uh, instances and uh, this would include all the customization so for example in this particular uh, instance i had installed apache server so when i create this image it would include uh, the apache server right so that's 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 one thing to keep in mind now we were talking about the modes which are available if you see here uh, under launch options you can see the modes which are available right so it looks like this is para virtualized which was my second option uh, we we talked about so how do we get to a hardware virtualized uh, machine so if you click on create instance here and we'll do something really quickly you have an instance name here uh, right here if you change the image source you can bring uh, custom images here so once that web image is up and running i could actually spin up an instance using my custom image right so i could just get that right here or i could come to image OSID, and if um, you, that custom image is stored in object storage i could actually get the, the link here if the link is available right so i choose a vm um, i choose my demo vc and that's fine i choose my subnet a i've been using that earlier right here because i'm not going to ssh into the machine so let me just skip that right here if i click on networking it gives me an option to choose my networking right i could let oracle choose uh, and if you click on this page you can see the various options which are supported right so you can see the difference between para virtualized 
and SRIOV with family supports with shape, etc. etc. Right, or I could choose it here or let Oracle decide. Right, so I'm going to choose a hardware assisted SRIOV, and this is the same as uh, the, the HVM we were talking earlier. Uh, and it gives you me this um, warning saying some instances might not be supported with the uh, with the uh, uh, mode I'm choosing. But right here, even though the instance is getting provisioned, you can see that my NIC attachment type is VFIO. Now, what that means is I'm using single root IO virtualization here and for maximum pass through. This is different than the NIC virtual attachment I had for the other instance. If I go back to my web instance, you would recall that in that uh, I was using uh, I was using uh, something called for for the NIC attachment I was using a para virtualized uh, mode but that's the difference between single root IO versus uh, versus uh, uh, versus a native mode uh, and of course I don't have an emulation mode here uh, but uh, you could you know use that as well now as you can see here my custom image is created right it literally took Less than a minute uh, and now here uh, I can create an instance right uh, or I could export this custom image right so if I say export basically it goes to one of the I you know I store this in my object storage so I have a bunch of these um, uh, buckets here I could actually go to a bucket or I could just do an object storage URL in that case I'll have to give a URL here uh, but right now let me just pick this bucket um, actually I have a bucket called pictures but I'll just use that right now and I'll say web and export image. And now what it would do is it would uh, create, uh, it would put this image, it would give me that URL, which now I could use, uh, share with, with other uh, uh, groups, uh, and they could use that uh, to import this image and create instances out of this. So hopefully this uh, gives you a quick um, overview of, uh, uh, of custom images and uh, image import export uh, capabilities. Thank you for joining this lecture. If you have time, join the next lecture where we talk about boot volumes. Thank you.